We have seen that there is a link between the rain and the resulting hydrograph at the outlet of a catchment. Knowing this relation between rain and discharge is very useful, as rains are much more easy to measure, while discharge measurements are more difficult to obtain, more expensive, and thus less common. This relation can be described by a transfer function that we need to define. There are different types of possible functions suitable for different types of catchments or areas. In the case of large catchments, where rain falls over the catchment and discharges at the outlet can be measured, the unit hydrograph is the preferred method. The rational method, adapted to smaller areas where no measurements are available, will be discussed in the next lesson. The unit hydrograph method was developed by Sherman in 1932. It aims at producing the runoff hydrograph related to a given rainfall, but considering only the net or effective rain. Let us consider a measured rainfall event as illustrated here and the corresponding hydrograph. Using one of the methods described in a previous lesson, we can separate the base flow and the runoff hydrograph. We can just calculate the volume of water in the runoff hydrograph, that is the volume here in blue. Transferring this volume on the gatograph allows to separate the net rain from the part that is lost for direct runoff, either by infiltration or evapotranspiration. From this, we can determine the index phi, defined as the average intensity above which rainwater directly turns into runoff flow. Intensities below phi only contribute to moisture refill and underground flow. Using this index, we can retain only the net rain from a given rainfall event. The index phi is considered as constant for a given catchment and a given type of rain. However, the difficulty or the inaccuracy of the method for establishing the net rain may constitute a weakness of the unit hydrograph method that has to be kept in mind. Sherman made two assumptions when developing the method. First, for a given catchment, uniform rainfalls of similar duration will produce hydrographs with the same time base Tb. This assumption comes from the observation that the time of concentration of a catchment only depends on the geometry and the nature of the catchment. The time of concentration is completely independent from the rain. According to the second assumption, for rainfalls of similar duration, the discharges in the hydrograph are proportional to the intensity of the corresponding rainfalls. This assumption is certainly valid for uniform rainfalls, where a change in intensity results in a change of volume and thus a change in runoff discharge. It implies that the hydrograph corresponding to a rainfall of the same duration but double in intensity will just be stretched vertically in an affine transformation. The assumptions that we just presented imply that for each catchment and for each uniform rainfall, there exist diff uh, typical hydrographs with similar shapes. So, to characterize a catchment, a specific hydrograph referring to a so-called unit rainfall will be defined. The duration of such a unit rainfall should be significantly shorter than the time of concentration in order for the resulting hydrograph to present a quasi-constant shape. A unit hydrograph will be presented as a series of ordinates y, as here, corresponding to different time abscissa. Each ordinate represents the discharge at time t, resulting from the unit rainfall over the catchment. The assumptions of the method imply that the response of a catchment to a given rainfall can be constructed as a linear combination based on the unit hydrograph. 
Let us consider the rainfall illustrated here, composed of three uniform rains, A, B, and C, of intensities I1, I2, and I3. The hydrograph resulting from each single rainfall is directly proportional to the unit hydrograph. This means that the ordinates y of the unit hydrograph are multiplied by the ratio of the considered rainfall intensity and the intensity I0 of the unit rainfall. Adding the contributions of each single rainfall A, B and C and taking into account the delay between the rainfall yields these relations giving the discharges of the resulting hydrograph at each time step T that can be taken, for example, equal to T0, the time of the unit rainfall. For example, to calculate Q3 here, we add these three quantities, where the Y values are the ordinates of the unit hydrograph at different times, is here. So, when using the method to construct a hydrograph following a given arbitrary rainfall, the unknowns of the problem are the ordinates Q of the resulting hydrograph, highlighted here in red. An example of application is given here. Let us consider this arbitrary rainfall. The unit hydrograph of the catchment is described in the table with the discharge QHU at each time step. For a time step T0 of 2 hours, the intensity of the unit rainfall I0 is then 5 mm per hour in order to form a volume of 10 mm. So the intensities of the three parts of the rain correspond to 0 0.4, 0 0.9 and 1.2 times the intensity I0 of the unit hydrograph. To construct the resulting hydrograph, the first step is just to calculate the ordinates of the hydrographs corresponding to each part of the rainfall by scaling the unit hydrograph HU as done in this table here and taking into account, of course, also the time lag of each ele elementary rainfall. Then, the final hydrograph is obtained by adding the three hydrographs to the base flow QB here this ladder being estimated from existing data, for example. Then the final result, given in the last column of the table, produces the blue hydrograph here. And as the third part of the rain is delayed by about four hours compared to the first part, the final hydrograph presents a double peak. We have seen how to use the unit hydrograph method to construct the hydrograph resulting from an arbitrary rainfall. But to be complete, we also need to know how to obtain a unit hydrograph for a given catchment. Three different methods can be used, depending on the available data. A first method can be used when measurements are available for a short uniform rainfall and for the resulting hydrograph. The first step is to separate the hydrograph into runoff and base flow, as discussed previously, in order to obtain the base flow QB. Subtracting this base flow from the total hydrograph yields the net discharge Q net here, the third column of the table. The net hydrograph can then be integrated here to calculate its total volume, that is about 12 million cubic meter. Considering that the total area of the catchment is 104 square kilometer, this volume corresponds to 117 millimeter of rain. Knowing this volume, we can find the index phi in the associated yetograph to separate the part of the rain that does not contribute to runoff and obtain the net rain. In the present case, we have an index phi of 5.2 mm per hour. Then, as the unit hydrograph corresponds by definition to a volume of rain equal to 10 mm, 
we can now obtain the unit hydrograph for the considered catchment by scaling the net hydrograph that has a volume of 117 mm. This means that we divide the measured here net hydrograph by 11.7 to obtain the unit hydrograph. This hydrograph is illustrated here in red and the resulting discharges are indicated here in red. The time abscissa are finally shifted in such a way that the hydrograph starts at time t equals zero. A second method can be applied when the available data correspond to a long duration rainfall of constant intensity, which is in fact rather seldom, but, uh, but can be possible. In such a case, we know that the resulting hydrograph can be obtained by the addition of hydrographs corresponding each to a short uniform rainfall. As a result, the total hydrograph presents a S shape, as illustrated here. Indeed, this hydrograph is the result of a short uniform rainfall, so this one here is the result of a short uniform rainfall of duration T1. If the rain lasts 2t1, we add this hydrograph to itself with a delay of t1, and the resulting curve is this one. Continuing the process finally results in the blue S-shape curve. So, if we observe such a S-shaped hydrograph, we know that it is the result of a long duration rainfall that can be separated into several rains of short duration T1. We can just shift the S-curve by T1 to obtain this second blue curve. The difference between the two curves is then the hydrograph resulting from a short rainfall of duration T1. For example, at time 2T1, the upper curve ordinate is 1 plus 2 while the shifted curve ordinate is uh, 1, the first ordinate of the um, hydrograph resulting from a short uniform rain. Here, the difference between the two curves is 3, and so on. So, to obtain the unit hydrograph, it only remains to scale this hydrograph, that is the difference between the two curves, in such a way that it corresponds to a unit rainfall of 10 mm. Finally, the third method is to be applied when the available measurements correspond to a heterogeneous rain, as illustrated here. The method is in fact just a reverse application of the methodology described previously to use the unit hydrograph. The discharges Q here at different time steps of the final hydrograph are unknown. These are the points and values highlighted in blue. The unknowns are now the ordinates Y of the unit hydrograph at each time step. And these values are highlighted in red. Knowing that the volume of the unit hydrograph is 10 mm, the intensity I0 can be easily deduced from T0, the duration of the, the unit uh, rainfall that can be taken, for example, as the time step T of the yetograph. Applying these methods to different sets of measurement results usually in different unit hydrographs for the catchment, in different estimates. For example, here, the red one and the green one. To calculate the resulting unit hydrograph, a simple averaging uh, could be applied. But the consequence would be the black curve here, with an exaggerated reduction of the peak discharge. To avoid this, the averaging near the peak is calculated by averaging the different peak values. So the final unit hydrograph is just the blue one here. And with this, we finish this lesson. See you for the next one.